Hello folks and welcome back to my shop. Well today, with the chill in the air this morning, I believe it's time to get this deluxe heater swapped out into this 49 Chevy, replacing that Arvin Research heater. So, let's get to it. First thing we got to do is drain down some of the antifreeze in the radiator. There's the petcock right there. What I do, this is a quarter inch standard plumbing piece of copper pipe, and I put it into uh, these these two jugs, antif empty antifreeze jugs I keep, and I drain it down to about two gallons, and that should be uh, plenty enough down to uh, allow the. Uh, uh, to keep the coolant away from the heater connections that we're going to be disconnecting shortly. Now we're going to disconnect the clamps that hold the existing uh, heater hoses to the uh, the recirc heater that's in there. Now these are pr these have been on there for quite a while. I may end up having to slicing them off because they aren't coming off and I don't want to damage that heater so I'm just going to slice them to get them off because I bought some more heater hose anyway up cutting these anyway and I don't think there's going to be enough length to uh, extend into the cab so I bought another I bought some more just to be just in case and you see all right good good I can get some plugs for that all right well good deal now these four bolts here are what holds the heater in I've got an electrical connection inside I need to disconnect and that uh and actually that heater will be just about ready to come out oh it will be anyway all right now we're gonna what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna lift off these two defrost ducts so i can get this wire kind of wrapped around here let me see i kind of want to okay i'm gonna cut it out right there all right so, for all practical purposes, this heater is ready to come out. All right. All right, now with the, uh, the electric disconnected, let's see if we can uh, unbolt this bad boy. By the original owner Lee and his son or or maybe all three of his sons and I had a hand in it but uh, and that core is still original doesn't leak and I've kind of got mixed feelings because I like to you know even though I did swap the motor of course uh, I'd, I'd like to try to keep this thing as close to original and stock as I can but uh, I'm not feeling too bad about it as that the luxe heater that's going in here is period correct. Uh, it can, you know, that heater was designed to go in from 47 to uh, 55.1 or the first series 55 advanced design trucks and the new design trucks of the GM. And speaking of the GMC, I am actually, this, this heater is going to go into the GMC so I can have some heat in it this winter. Anyway, 
pull it out. All right, this is that Arvin heater. This is actually the top. I'm not gonna, it actually sits in the truck like this. But if I tip it over too much, I'm gonna have the antifreeze is gonna come out. See, there's the name. There's the air intake. And that's the actual heater core right here, see? It, the air is pulled down through, comes out these side slots here. Side slots here, defrost ducts there, and there's one slot on the on the front, and there's the electric wire. The other wire, the other side of the uh, uh, electric motor is uh, grounded to the frame, which of course is grounded through these bolts. So anyway, a real basic heater that's really good. Again, that. That, that heater is 70 years old. So is that core, and it does not leak. Isn't that amazing? And it works. So it's going to go in here eventually. Possibly before winter because we need to get him out and run some too. It's been sitting too long. Anyway, on with the swap. All right, that looks good under here. That's the firewall, that's the original insulation. It's still good. So let's see if we can set him up here where I can get a good eye. We can see what's going on. We're gonna take these bolts off here. I'm only gonna loosen these on this side. Cause I don't think there'll be an easy way to get to them. Once, uh, once I get the heater situated up here. All right. All right. But we will remove these fully on this side. And they've got those star lock washers on them. You know, it's funny, I, uh, that, my GMC over there, it probably had a, a deluxe heater in it, because this plate was actually missing, so I made up a plate. Well, I gotta take them screws out on it. So I made up a plate to, uh, cover the hole. What somebody had done is they put some duct tape in that something. So anyway, well, there you go. And that's what it looks like. Oh, it looks like some mud daubers might have been in there. Well, let's see. It actually doesn't look too bad in there, does it? For all them years being exposed to the uh, elements. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I've got a gasket i got to put on here that I'm going to start these three. So the heater comes in, but I'm going to have to do some fitting first to figure out holes. i got these holes I've got in large right here for the uh, water lines. And then there's some bolt up holes. So anyway, let's get to it. All right, I believe I'm doing a blind recording, but anyway, this is the gasket set. And that big gasket there, uh, it goes between the, uh, the heater and this right here. I don't know if it's necessary because, huh, I mean to tell you the truth, there's no gasket there anyway, but we're gonna to attempt to put it on there anyway. There's some, uh, I'm gonna punch some of these out. That is really, really in pretty good shape. I'm surprised at how good that looks. Okay. Okay, all four holes are out. Oh, 
Well, it don't match up exactly, but I guess it's close enough. And I didn't get that one out. Okay. We're going to start, just barely start them. And hopefully it'll be able to slide in there. All right. All right. All right, I removed the plate. I thought I was recording, but I didn't. The three screws here, remove the plate, and that's the insulation. Now, I only need three inches of this cut out for the electric motor, and uh, I'm gonna figure the center of it uh, by from the inside, then I'll poke through to get the center, then I'll do my three inches, because that's the size of the electric motor. I said earlier I didn't wanna uh, put a hole in this plate well I may change my mind I don't know we'll just have to see I, I can't see going back to a uh, the uh, research heater this will stay with this uh, uh, deluxe heater from this point on so I may cut the hole in. I don't know we'll see I'm ciphering on it still just see what I feel like necessary to remove the, uh, the screw yeah glove box and uh, there's just uh, five or si five six maybe seven of these little screws that hold it in and it looks like it's a ring a metal ring that clamp that uh, and then the uh, cardboard out is he? I have to put some torque to him. And the cardboard glove box goes between this ring and the uh, dash. I know I keep saying original this and original that. All right, there's the uh, there's the ring. We'll put him over there. And how are we gonna come out? Straight back. Yeah, no damage. Very good. A whole lot more access in there now. Let's clean this thing out. That's affording a whole lot more room to work with in there now. All right, good deal. All right. Now yeah, we're going to move this down to here. Aim him up. All right. Move the light to here. Well, hope the move the light to there. Okay. And we got to figure out the mountain hole where they'll go. All right. That. I think he bolts to one of those holes there. Maybe this other one too. Okay. Alright. Now I need to cut a hole out for the uh, electric motor. All right, I got the hole cut out here. You can see where I've test fitted and pushed it out. Once I get the uh, heater mounted and the electric motor sticking out, then I'll trim around that. Now, let me tell you something. That insulation is some of the toughest insulation I've ever run across. Here's what I had to cut out. Now, the instructions say for the mounting brackets where they go through the firewall, they've got, you got to cut out 
the insulation so it will mount directly to the metal. That way it'll get in close because you're talking about a half inch almost here. It's a, uh, uh, I don't know, nine sixteenths even or up to a half inch uh, thick there. So anyway, um, so to cut that, I had to, uh, I've used this tool, use this tool, scissors, everything, and that is just some tough stuff. It just does not rip apart like your standard rock wool or anything. So anyway, uh, now getting this heater up there, I don't know if this, uh, I won't be able to, I'll just have to show you the aftermath because there's a lot of finagling and uh, there's nowhere I can put the camera. So just sit tight and we'll get it there. All right, I got it bolted in on the firewall side. I got the holes cut for the uh, the hot water lines to go to the uh, heater, and uh, I've got the grommets, the rubber grommets, installed. So now we're going to try to install those heater hoses. All right, and what I've done is I've taped each end of the hose. So, uh, well, actually, now that I've got that in there, well. We'll still do it. Alright. I got him started and I got him started. So now we're going to go on the inside and um, connect it up. Alright. Let's see. We'll start with this inside one first. Get that tape off. Let's get this clamp ready. It was a struggle getting that in there. Let me tell you, it's not uh, it's not an easy thing. Okay, we'll do it on this side so as not to interfere. connected electrics connected it's high got the frost ducts that's all just heat no defrost that's heat and defrost and that's probably where I'm gonna keep it may even tie wrap it that way there's medium And there's low and I'm gonna guess when you're cruising down the road it's quite possible that uh, fresh air coming in may be enough without even any fan I don't know I, I, I don't know these uh, how these heaters actually work uh, perhaps someone uh, watching that has one would know but uh, I would have recorded muscling this thing in, but oh, it was it was a beast. It was a bear, and uh, and you know keeping the gasket aligned and getting the holes lined up because uh, even though uh, this uh, this definitely came out of a uh, another uh, advanced design or new design uh, truck. Uh, you know sometimes the holes aren't exactly the same. They uh, they say that. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of these show trucks these days has better fitment than the uh, what came out of the factory back in the day. But anyway, uh, some bending, some grunting, and uh, we finally got it muscled in there. All six bolts. The backside on the middle. Uh, the, it said uh, in the instructions that it included a hex head 
uh, screw to fit in the middle backside and I can tell you that uh, if, if you're going to do this definitely try to locate one of them because it's uh, to work around the uh, duct work here it's just hard to get a screwdriver on there and you know these are straight slot screws but I did uh, I guess I can thank my uh, uh, having to work around and on aircraft back in the military because you did a lot of stuff by feel you couldn't see what you were doing it was all by feel and that's what you got with this dude. So anyway, let's now get under the hood and get that connected. All right, we're gonna work on getting these hoses connected now. Let me see. I tell you what, I bought a four foot uh, length of this 5 8 uh, heater line, and uh, there ain't a whole lot to spare on it. So let's see. I want to bend him around like that. Okay. So we'll cut him about right there. Okay. Square that up a little bit. Got some new clamps. Uh, public service uh, announcement here. Uh, if uh, any of uh, anybody watching this, uh, if you're a veteran, uh, a military veteran, um, I went to a local flaps, uh, which uh, you know is an acronym for a friendly local auto parts store, uh, and uh, I. Uh, when I went to purchase any parts anymore, I, uh, I presented my v, uh, uh, veteran card and uh, I, get a t I got a 10% discount. Pretty much all of them will do that, all your, uh, all your name flaps, uh, auto parts stores. And uh, it's well worth your while to get, the, to get a... Uh, that card. Now I'll go ahead and I'll uh, I'll put a link on the uh, that's on. I'll put a link um, in this to uh, to the uh, government site, uh, and uh, you just uh, fill out. You can fill out online all you need, uh, all the information they need, and uh, they'll have you take a picture and text it to them or email it to them. And uh, they'll send you a card after they verify all your information. Then I'm just going to give them away to uh, the non-veterans. So anyway, like I say, it'd be worth your while to, uh, you know what, I should have routed that over there. But anyway, running my mouth and not paying attention. Uh, it'd be worth your while to uh, apply for it. 10%. I've had some places uh, uh, give me action. Well, no, I think 10% is about it. Restaurants, auto parts. Uh, took the wife to a show here back in, in Pigeon Ford, which is a local, uh, a local tourist type community near Gatlinburg. If you heard of Gatlinburg and Pigeon Ford, well, and uh, they gave me a, it seemed like it was more than 10% discount. So, uh, uh, on the tickets. So anyway, like I say, I'll, I'll put it. I'll put a link on it, and uh, we'll go from there.
That doesn't look bad at all. Let's uh, start filling it with some antifreeze. Looks full. Tip top. All right, let's start it up. See if we got any leaks. Place the cable basically is what I'm saying and I may go with a lever type instead of a pull so I don't know we'll see so I'm gonna manually have to do it I'll go ahead and open this up actually I should have done that before I started <laughs> on the inside making sure it's not leaking we're looking good down there at the manual valve we're 
We're looking good here. Boy, that's too hot to the touch. Yeah, this cable. Let's leave it open. That cable messed up. Yeah, let's come in here. Got it on, running on low now. And I've got it on defrost and heat, so I've got hot air. Let's put it on high. All right, there's hot air coming out for heat. And there's hot air coming out of the defrosters. All right. A good deal. Of course, we go to max heat. So, oh, very good. No leaks. All right. Well, good deal. Other than my control being messed up. Now let's turn him off. Let's see if them hoses cool off some. All right. Well, I got to dress this up. Get another cable. Let's see how my antifreeze is looking. Since we got all that circulating in there. Oh, it's not hardly down at all. Yeah, it's... Definitely the thermostat's open. A good deal. All right. been playing with that valve and I think I've come up with a fix for it I had to shorten the cable to uh, there was a, a little flat spot I guess when when I clamped it in the uh, bracket it uh, held it but I noticed it would pull out okay but it wouldn't push back in so I put that return spring on there and let's see what it does now there's on there's off on Oh, we'll leave it on for a moment. Yep, that's where I need it. Okay, good deal. Turn him off. All right. All right, now we got some, uh, put my glove box back together. Would have showed uh, me putting the uh, glove box back in, but it would have been an hour long video. <laughs> I guess I could have done a fast forward on it, but once I got started, I wasn't going to stop. These there's there's little holes that the uh, screws and this trim piece has to line around with the cardboard, and then I tell you that cardboard just barely fits around that deluxe heater. I mean, it, everything is so tight. Let me get that wire dressed up up here. All right. I got to do some wire dressing. My cable is going to have to go. I'm going to try to put him up like that, and we'll see what he does. But anyway, man, what a deal. Getting him all in there. I showed where uh, I put that return spring, and that helped immensely with the... Uh, I still may have to get another cable. I don't know. We'll see. It, uh, it's working now. It's just that when I had to cut it off, uh, I, don't, I don't really trust my loop there to uh, hold and not bend. But we'll see. And let's see. We've got to get him cut. And we've got to get a plate fitted for that. And that's where we're at now. That is some tough insulation, I'm going to tell you what. I need to make a plate for that to cover them holes. 
and uh, let's see what we can do about that. Here's the gasket that uh, came in the kit, and it's actually I already tried to line it up, and it never, it didn't even fit right. I just thought of something, what I might do. Alright, what I'm going to do for now is just use the gasket right here. The insulation is really good around it. And I'm going to use that gasket. I'm going to still see if I can't find the... Uh, the uh, the correct ring metal ring that goes around that and in the meantime I can use the other one uh, my solid plate as a template to uh, make one up so anyway I got him secured in there did a little I found a couple plugs that plugged up the uh, that I had that plugged up the water line holes that's good I did a little tape a little touch up now that uh, that's uh, the same satin paint so it'll dry and match better there's my control on the uh, the hot water control the manual valve here is going to stay open at all times now and uh, what I'll do is I'll just use this valve to control heat going into my core my heater core my heater uh, like I say before now I, I could be wrong but the water probably comes out from the top before it goes in the thermostat it's hot water comes out comes up here to the top of this valve and it circulates back and goes through the valve back into the water pump to be recirculated or wherever it goes it may work the other way I'm not sure uh, tell you the truth and I didn't want I didn't I wasn't curious enough to uh, uh, <laughs> do a pressure test to see which one comes out and then with the valve off it circulates it doesn't come here until I open the valve and then the water will circulate through the uh, heater core so we'll see how that does I really I'll probably end up replacing this cable here and I'm also on the lookout for a Rancor uh, valve uh, that I'll put in to make it uh, you know authentically period correct because right now with this type of hot water control I'm not really authentic uh, it's functional but it's not authentic. So anyway, and on the inside, we've got the heater connected. Got the glove box back in. Oh, I got to dress that wire up. Dress my wires up. But uh, the heater's in. Everything's secured. We're cleaned up, and it works. There's my glove box. So that's where we're at. Anyway, it is now serviceable, and I can move uh, move towards getting some heat in that GMC. And uh, there's a few more things I like to get done to the Chevy before I uh, switch uh, gears over to the GMC, namely the windshield there. And uh, really would like to get the start working on knocking some of these dents out. Also, I picked up some from uh, one of the uh, one of the people that's uh, uh, posted a response on my uh, on my on my channel. Recommended this boiled lean linseed oil as a finish for that uh, patina. So we're going to do that too. Anyway, that's where we're at right now.